Previously on the Abba Dungeon, Sin and Ivory got attacked by orcs again and narrowly escaped in a helpful stranger's fishing boat, which they stole and stealthily piloted to the nearby Dullivan district, where they drank with the dwarven locals and searched for work. And meanwhile, on the demon ship, Captain Aerog and his crew prepared for their first attack and executed the planned whale breach maneuver flawlessly, then captured some new crew members and took a few treasures before preparing for their next attack. And now, the other dungeon continues. Ah! All right, you guys head towards these larger ships. How many ships are we approaching? There are seven ships in a circle. Like I said, equal in size to your ships, but wooden. Your ships, uh, well, it appears metallic. It's more like a hardened flesh. It's like a shell on the outside. Is like our a only beetle door body. the top hatch? Your only oh. door to the, yeah, your only escape to outside is the top hatch, correct. Are they also submarines? No, they're normal ships, like floating in the uh, water. Oh. Like sail, they're like sailboats. Well, they seem to have formed a circle, and all of them seem to be connected by planks to each other. They seem to have set anchor. Okay. I have spells, like, through the so we can like creep fog, Pirates of the Caribbean, our own selves, onto a ship and just grab some shit real quick and then hop back in the submarine. I love it. Or like, because if we crash into it, yeah, it's probably going to start thinking and then the whole circle is going to start noticing ships going down underwater. No, there's too many of them. If one tries to shoot and stab and kill, we die. I'm going to summon some nature's allies and we're going to put it in the middle of the goddamn ring and we're going to cause a motherfucking traction. Okay, that's even better. <laughs> and then we're going to miss Allies. the fuck out of it. So you guys need to get close enough to do these spells. So do you want to go underwater but then get close enough to cast this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not submarine down. Going but maybe only 30 or 60 feet yeah. down but like right outside the ring? Yeah. So you can like yeah, cast spells in like, that direction? Yeah, just up to like as close as we get in a standby position. Alright, do you guys want to look through the periscope while you're underwater here like near the ring? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a uh, see if there's any, like, activity on, on the ships or whatever. 28 on uh, perception. All right, Phil, you're underwater, so you can only see, like, the bottoms of the ships now. You can't see what's going on above deck or above water. But you do see in the center of this ring what looks like maybe a rope or a tube going down below the water. I think we gotta flip the ship. Yeah, let's do it. Can we tip down? Oh, you just yeah. tilt. Instead of, like, diving, you just tilt? Yeah, I will dive in. You dive and tilt down until you see a man attached to a tube in what looks like some large armor that covers his whole body, including his head, with a very small aperture for viewing. And he looks over and sees your tube, and then you see bubbles erupt out of his suit. <laughs> and he like tugs, he, he's tugging on this tube as, you, as he sees you guys approaching him. Do we have uh, weapons? You guys are inside the sub, and the sub itself has no weapons. It can't fire anything. It's totally relying on you guys to attack and take prisoners and stuff. You are close enough, and as long as you're using the periscope to see the guy, you can. He's close enough to cast spells on. He's underwater, so the spells have to work underwater, but yeah, it's possible. But he's already yanking this thing, so he's already drawn the attention of whoever's above at this point, but you can still cast. Okay. Would lightning work underwater? Lightning actually works better underwater because it's underwater. Oh, especially salt water, because it's super conductive. So actually, you'll do double damage with lightning underwater. Do you want to shock this guy to death before they pull him up? Call lightning bolts. Alright, I get a reflex save. I got an 18 reflex if it is reflex. Uh, 17. Alright, so I take half damage. Current 17 shit. damage for what? That guy, you shock him unconscious. So when you see after uh, he tugs on the line, the tube that he's attached to, he starts like rapidly rising. But you see he's now limp as they drag him up. Your lightning, your underwater lightning bolt has obviously knocked him unconscious. So they're dragging an unconscious body above the water. Maybe even by the time he gets above the water, could be drowned since he's so far deep. He might by the time he reaches the water be dead. You guys don't see any of this going on above water, but the man that you shocked is now gone. He's been like yanked away. Damn, yeah, okay, I think we got it. He is gonna say he's like Um, can we take four people with us? Yeah, totally fine. How do you feel about take telling the boat to dip out for a second? We want to wait there. I'm pretty sure I have to hang on the boat. Oh, shit. Point. So that is fine. Okay. 
Um, you don't have to, you can leave the boat, but if you leave the boat, you lose control of all the crew. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. And Super anyone that leaves the boat is technically no longer under your control. So it's um, better to entice them to have a reason to come back if they do leave the ship. So if Bekefo does take four crew members with Bekefo, you need to give them a reason to come back and not defect. I think you, have, I think you guys have picked that up over this course of time. You guys have left yeah. the ship. You've left the ship before and then realized, like on the giant island, when you left the ship, you know you didn't feel compelled to come back. You came, you came back because you had to. How about the loot they get? They- I mean, All right, so you yeah. offer them to loot these ships and take what they can and bring it back here and it's theirs to keep, personally? Yeah, so they pay some good. tribute to the captain. They're a good crewman, they'll pay a small tribute. Once they get back to the ship, they have no choice. You can easily just lie to them and say, you can keep all of it. And then when they get back on the ship, you're the captain to be like, give me 50%. And they have to either do it or do a will save to not do it. So, in which case, at that point, you could just have them thrown in the furnace if they disobey. You should get something at Big Grand. Oh, a bonus. We got all that gold, right? Okay. You're a crime. Now we're talking business. This is business talk here. Counted up about 1,000 gold. Okay. You got a big treasure right now, yeah. You got a hoard. Yeah. What do you think about a hundred gold per person? Do we even have to leave? No, we don't. But so that's incentive. Yeah, once they get back, you don't have to leave. But, that's it. but when they leave the ship in their minds, that's the incentive for coming back with people. A hundred gold per person per in the cage. Alive and Ish, yeah. not dead, but not. Yeah. I mean, conscious. I don't care about that, but just not dead. And how big of a team do you want to take Bekefo? So it's Phil slash Bekefo, and how many folks from the ship are leaving? The worms coming. Yeah, me. Okay, so Phil, Eric, you. I fly out the dark for him and fly out. I'm gonna take Ron, Ted, Howie. I got Matt. one. Yeah, you gotta periscope it. You gotta know what's going on. There. So are you guys gonna like surface but stay try to stay hidden? If you're waiting until nighttime, you're just below the water, you're just gonna periscope up. We'll throw a body over the egg. <laughs> and that means that we're, I like it. I we're like about that to our pirate symbol We're about to throw some people <laughs> over and roll up. Gotcha. Send people to help. Well, you see that body going over. The outside, like the That's outside. That's the symbol for us to come pick you guys up. Or the glowworm. Or the glowworm can do like Hey, I don't want to be referred to. <laughs> so, dude, if Ergu wants to, they can make some symbols in the air. Like, they just don't care. I like body over the side. All right, but still blink. Like, I mean, you can do that, that too. How far do you want your demon ship to be away from these semi-surfaces? I guess you need to be close enough to the surface of the water that you can periscope and that the hatch can be open without spilling a bunch of water in. Pretty much one that you want the deck of the ship above water so that your allies can leave the ship, right? Exactly, yes. So how far away do you want to be above water? Drop us off. I mean, you're gonna leave the ship. I rolled low enough that you guys are able to surface 20 feet away from these ships without anyone noticing at night. You do it silently, you come straight up, quietly. It's just the top deck, like right at the surface where the hatch is. Like that's flat with the surface of the water, and the periscope is about five, six feet above the water at its height. But you guys can now open the hatch and go out on the top of the ship and be only 20 feet away from these boats in the dark. And like I said, a lot of their attention seems to be focused inward. You guys noticed that from the, you know, the guy diving. They're obviously not looking outwards to see. They're looking inwards. So they're searching this area below, obviously. And when you guys also follow this guy downward earlier with your ship pointed down, you saw similar ruins to the ones you saw before, although they seem a lot more destroyed than the ones you saw farther away. So these ones closer seem in much more ruined, fast world structures. I go into a 100% race, <laughs> riding a little bit faster and harder. Yeah. You're basically like vibrating. It's like when you pull a worm out of the dirt and you're on a weird surface. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really violent. Something crazy happens on your end, rise up and like flare up or something. And we'll try to hijack yeah. a boat. But that symbol means crash into the boat. <laughs> okay, okay. There are two. Five and Aragu. Alright, so you got five guys in Aragu and you're about 20 feet away from these ships. You're now on the surface of the ship. Currently, everyone's still under Aragu's control. But as soon as you guys leap into the water, otherwise, you become free agents, able to do whatever you want. Aragu, of course, already has that. Okay, I'm about to roll out. This session, I'm about to roll out. I'm taking Ted with me. I really don't want to bring Ted with, but I kind of felt back in the corner. And I'm like the flash is the part where Ted back in the corner asks again. <laughs> Can I come or what? I really want to come. I really want to come. <laughs> Look, I've been cooped up here too long. Can I come? I really, like, you gotta pick me, right? Come on, Phil. You and me, Phil, we go way back. Phil, you don't remember this guy. You feel obligated to bring him because he knows Phil. So we're running across the top of the ship. Yeah, now you guys are outside with your five guys and you're all prepared. Do you guys want to dive into the water and swim towards these ships or what? How are you planning on getting aboard? I'm short swim. 
start swimming. Like, as soon as you guys jump in the water, Erugu is already, like, you flew right away, you're now flying, you're, like, hovering over the ship while they're still, like, I, before I, they I, even make it in the water. I'm like an ominous worm flapping around. You guys want to roll stealth when you jump in the water, or do you just want to make a loud splash? Uh, yeah, I want to stealth jump. Once they're out, we close the hatch, uh, go back out. I shoot 50 feet up in the air, right out of the hatch. Go up. So you go up <laughs> instead of towards the Yeah, I just right. That's my move. I just right up in the air. Alright, All right, so Eric goes up above you guys. And it probably wasn't you. It was probably your allies that jumped in the water. Maybe not Phil, but some of the other f group of five. They attracted some attention from the ship, so you now see, like, lantern light focusing. It comes from one side of the ship to the other. I can't you cast a scary mist and mist appears. Lights are now shining into the mist. Luckily, the mist is blocking any clear view of you. Although, yeah, with the lights, it might pick up a shadow or two. No sound on as many people as I can that are like looking around the mist. But I just want them to like hear like human voices mumbling from all around them, and like, it, but it's like in their head, and it's really right. spooky. I get a will yeah. save for all the people in the nearby ships that might hear this ghost sound. I rolled low enough that most of them, about half of them, are gonna believe it's real and like be scared of this. Spooky noise, this murmuring oh. around them. I'm circling around in the, in the air. Oh, nice. Just making spooky ghost sounds. Oh, it's so spooky. Are you being spooky? It's foggy. There's light shining towards you guys. You're trying to swim as silently as possible. Roll me some swim checks. Maybe a stealth check if you want to remain silent. Yeah, you're, you're getting there not very fast. And you see that the crew members that jumped in the water also aren't getting there very fast. Many of them almost seem confused. Like once they jumped in the water, they are less sure of their goals. And so they're like, they're like swimming. They're like dog paddling in place. They're not moving forward or backward. I'm going to look at them and I'm going to be like, shh. Like, I'm just gonna act like, you know, like, it's their fault, like, and their fault, and I'm just gonna be like, shh, if we make too much noise, they'll hear us, and then I'll come and see or something that if you want me to. Yeah, you can, you can do that, that doesn't hurt. I start just like, seven. <laughs> They don't seem to respond to you. I tell them that if they don't stick to the plan, that they're probably gonna fucking die. Intimidation check. Oh, uh, five. They seem just as unsure as before. No more spurred into battle than with your previous on. statements. No check, just statement. I just tell them that they make their own choices in life, and me and my obscure mist on. I just well, no, the mist. All right, you start swimming in that direction. One or two of them start calling out for help, which definitely attracts the attention from the boat. I swim back to them and pull out my weapon. I want to cast Dancing Lights, but I want to do the one that casts a vaguely humanoid shape. Okay, so like, you have like a, I, a ghostly spectral light moving around. I want to like blast that right in the center of all the people I've already scared and confused with my ghost sounds. So we we'll put one on one of the boats, maybe. Yeah, and I'm hoping that those sounds are still happening, so I'm just like, send it in a Scooby-Doo ghost out. You don't have to hope. You can look at the duration of the spell, and that'll tell you how long it lasts. Oh, it was one round. It I would probably draw some of their attention. Their, some of their lights will turn that direction as they see a figure moving, so it's gonna, it'll help. I'm trying to distract the ones that are, like, hearing the splash. All right, so these guys are going to hear your old crewmates calling out for help, and they're going to start throwing a rope out in the water towards them. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I call for help too. All right, you call for help as well. Rope comes your direction. Yeah, I got that rope. The they start saying stuff like the demon ship. Save us from the demon ship. And now the guys aboard the ship start sounding an alarm. They're ringing a loud bell once they hear the word demon ship. Oh, damn it. Shit. <laughs> I tell, I just look at the other crewmates and I'm just like, I don't know what else to do but yell at me for now. I'm just like, shut up! <laughs> like, what are you doing? If we can take these people for all their words. Like, oh. what's wrong with you? Like, I say to the people. <laughs> Yeah, they seem more worried about their lives and their souls and all the other things that accompany having recently left the demon ship and coming to terms with what they've been doing with their lives recently. How many of these people are yelling out? Three or four of the people you bought. A majority of them at this point. At first it was one or two, but it's it's grown to almost a majority of them. That's why you just started this whole fucking thing. Fucking you. Piss. I knew you were going to suit. Just fucking loyal as fuck, suit. Soup is, soup's hard in the paint. He's, you know, he's a true blue. I mean, Okay. Well, I'm gonna. No, I'm not gonna kill Ted. No, I'm gonna kill Ted. Yes. Alright, so you wanna roll me a swim check to swim to someone and then an attack on him? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, 
my swim check yep. is an 11. Not the best. You're definitely like splashing. You're not the best swimmer. <laughs> in Phil's body, like you're used to swimming in a dwarf body with shorter arms. His, his arms, he's so lanky. It feels weird to swim like this. You're splashing a lot, but you are able to reach your target if you want to roll the attack as you swim over there. Yeah, I swim. I shiv him. <laughs> Can I add anything to my That's roll? That's B-A-B plus strength. 23. Oh yeah, you definitely shiv him. As this well, bubbles out in the water. Five. Five damage. Lanterns start being lit on all seven ships. You see crew members like rushing to the decks of all these ships, drawing their weapons. I'm looking around for any sight of enemies and stuff. I fly up. I'm gonna roll a perception check. No one spotted you, Aragu. They will hear the people calling for help on the other side, though. People that have grabbed ropes are being dragged towards the ship at this point. People from the team and ship that have grabbed ropes are being pulled closer to the ships. Aragu can't really hear anything, but he sees all of this. So it's like silent movie time for Aragu. He sees people swimming. He sees rope. He sees what's happening, but just like what's directly in front of the ship and nothing else. Can't see Aragu because Aragu's above you. She's like 120 feet in the air at this point. I feel like you can make something out of this. All right. I'm gonna give you some time. Before I go in <laughs> okay, well, is pulling him off the rope a swifter action? That would be either, that's probably a standard. It's either a C and B to wrestle off the rope or an attack to cut the rope, something. But it'd be a standard, whatever you probably do to get him off the rope. Any Thanks number of things. You're be, the rope is being dragged close to the ships, yes. And you, you you can be right there with him. You can have also grabbed the rope and been following. But you can I cut the rope or get him off the rope or whatever. I will be on that rope also and. But you can also like a, you can like kick him with an attack and try and knock him off the rope, or you can see him be him to like shove him off the rope. I'm just gonna kick him off. Right, so he's gonna kick the guy. He may or may not let go, but it'll take damage if he takes enough damage to go unconscious or let go. I'm gonna kick him in his shiv hole. No, no, I'm not. Seven. All right, that's definitely a miss. You kick him and your just like leg goes through the water and misses his body. You like feel the resistance from the water, but you really. All right, I'm just holding on to the rope, getting dragged up. Yeah, you're both holding on the rope as you get closer and closer to the ship. And I guess we got off it. You're probably about 50 feet up again. Yeah, Ooh. but like. like Flying around. I do the ghost sound thing again to everyone. All right, another will say. I rolled low enough that about half of them, same as last time. Or what's that noise? It's so spooky. What's happening? They've already heard the word demon ship too, so they're at high alert. Then many of them have their weapons drawn. They're like spinning around circles, looking for something to shoot. It's a very tense moment aboard all seven ships right now. Pulled up the side of the ship, so everyone that has the rope is now being pulled up aboard, being rescued by this nice sea folk. Five, ten feet away from the lip of the ship, you're about to be pulled aboard. Um, like, help us, please, help us! And I try to just, like, use my foot to just, like, push on Ted. Right, C and B <laughs> to make Ted let go of the rope. Ooh. Yeah, you knock him back into the water. He lets go. He's still calling for help after you knock him off. Uh, I scream louder for help. In the next six seconds or so, you're going to get over the lip of the boat, and he won't. He might throw him another rope because he's still splashing around and they're calling for help. Uh, but you bought yourself at least a round or two before he gets aboard and exposes you. He's going to bleed out that water. <laughs> he is bleeding a lot, and he is in the water. Um, I'm just circling above, just like keeping an eye. Close to my party member that are now on the new ship. I'm up high still, not, not trying to, I'm darting around. Where you're moving a lot. It went really fast, and it's nighttime, so you're yeah. probably fine. You're, you're like a glimmer in the night sky. I'm beautiful. You're not making a bunch of noise, so no one's really looking up there. You've been drawing much attention to yourself. So until someone accidentally sees you, you're probably fine, and I haven't rolled high enough for that yet. But yeah, then it's back to my guys, who are going to now pull Bekefo and some other crew members aboard. Oh, They're going to oh. toss another rope down for the ally you just kicked, of course. That's okay. <laughs> um, just like, oh, thank you. Where are we? They all shrug. They're like, well, it's not really a definable area. I don't any map. We're south of New Dorp in the, you know, the treacherous waters, just north of the dark water. Just do what's exploring. How'd you, where, if you don't know where, how'd you get out of here? Where's your ship? Where'd you come from? Hi, Someone hi. yelled demon ship. Have you seen the damn thing? I start with my head low and I tilt my eyes up so my smile comes forward and I say, these are treacherous waters, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you summon a giant spider, which appears on the deck of the ship. Yeah. It has summoning sickness, so it can't do anything this round, but... Can I communicate to my spider before it starts doing shit, since it can't do anything right now? You can talk to it in Sylvan if you like, to give it commands. I would love to talk to it in Sylvan, spider language. And I'm just going to tell it, cause a ruckus on this boat, and keep running the other boat. Just go crazy. Just go in a circle, like, run in circles, fucking shit up. And I, whatever the evil equivalent of blessing it is, but not like cursing it, not, not, not Yeah, like it. there's evil blessing, but it's still I a blessing. Bless it. Ugh. And then I'm gonna, I run towards a downhatch door. I'm going in. All 
Alright, so you try to go below deck. You have to get past a lot of people, so that might provoke some attack opportunities if you start acting weird and trying to run past people. Oh, uh, so wait, my spider can't move yet. I'm gonna wait for my spider to move. Alright, so you hold position until the spider moves? Yeah, I said that cool line, and that's it. Yeah, I'm just kind of like flit around some more. I'm just like biding my time. So up there raging. At this point, someone will point out the shimmering object in the air, and someone else will point out the periscope from the demon ship. Both oh, have been spotted sorry. at this point. So two people call out, and they're gonna turn to everyone that's pulled aboard. Now their weapons are all pointed at you. Are you with them? They Me? ask. They ask you and everyone else. With who, I say. Are you with the demon ship? What demon ship? Bluff check. Demon ship? Demon what? what? Nine? They're not buying it. The weapons are <laughs> firmly pointed. There's several crossbows pointed right at your face right now. I'm like... They ask you, like, I'm... hands up. Surrender. You know, they're pretty much asking you to surrender at this point. I put my hands up. It's like, there must be some sort of misunderstanding. They motion to some other sailors to tie your hands and all the new cast... All the people that have they pulled in the ship are going to tie you up, at least for the time being, so they can sort out what's going on. I fly up. Everybody gets farther away while you guys get tied up. I'm back down and I'm back up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The spider, of course, is going to get a chance to attack now, and they're going to start attacking the spider. I'll let the spider go first. Oh, yes, bitch. I'm going to poop out some web all up on the deck. Every web. <laughs> web deck. Web yeah, turds. Web weapon. Down there. Down there. <laughs> All right, the, the parasol goes down. The ship sinks. You guys now can no longer get back on the ship because the hatch is underwater. Arrow goes 40 feet down. You can no longer be seen. In the air. I'm going to turn into a raven. All right, you turn into a raven 100 feet up in the air. I'm going to assume they're going to kill the spider, but you summoned it, so it does. we'll say it does some damage. Go through the period of time. The spider does get off some attacks. It shoots some web around. We'll say it makes a big webby mess on some of the ships. They really do end up killing it. I'm going to web just uh, holding the guns on it. I mean, there's a lot of people with crossbows. So you can web some. I mean, it's an attack, so you can probably only web one person with it. Whoever looks like it's about to attack this spider. All right, so he's going to attack someone nearby with a web. Eighteen's enough to web someone, so you web one of these sh shipmates. Hey. Someone's webbed. Then they swing on it, do some damage, I'm sure, and they might web someone else again. So this goes on for a few moments, probably 20 seconds, 24 seconds or so, before they kill the spider. There's a webby mess. There's people stuck in web that are now, like, trying to get it off. You guys are tied up. I'm going to fly down 50 feet. I have eyes. Yeah, you have eyeballs now as a, as a raven, so your eyes work like normal eyeballs do. So you actually have visual confirmation of what's happening. You crow in apprehension. Do you want to fly any closer or maintain your 50 foot distance? Oh, I'm a raven. There are crow's nests nearby? There's crow's nests on many of these ships. Sails. They seem to be like normal sailboats. Large sailboats, large vessels, but uh, they seem to be like like galleons almost, with like three or three masts, four masts, like large ships. As big as this ship that you came off of. So larger than normal sailboats or fishing vessels. Well, I'm a raven now. I'm going to fly down and land on the crow's nest and just like see what's going on. If anyone knows, they just like... Uh, most of them seem to be currently occupied with what's going on on top deck and not up there. So they're not trying to spy land right now. So there's not even anyone manning the crow's nest. The crow's nest is completely empty when you land in it. Those of you that are captured have crossbows pointed at you. You are bound. The crews have all been alerted. They've called out some religious crew members dressed in cassocks. Possibly clerics or paladins, and they're casting spells in the ships. The ships oh. now are pulling up the planks, the planks that were connecting all of them so they could hop easily from ship to ship. Now drawing those inward, and the captains are yelling orders. Do any of you guys speak Elven? I do not speak Elven. <laughs> One of your captured crew members does, but you don't know that, and he's not translating. So you don't really know what's going on, but the ships are packing up and splitting up into groups. You can roll linguistics if you want to try and pick out some words. Same for you, Aragu, you're there. So I'm not trying to understand a word. Language that you can try. I got a one. I'm a bird. Sounds like gobbledygook to you. I got four. All right, yeah, neither one of you guys really... Under Elvin's pretty tricky language, to be fair. Elvin's not for every ear. It's uh, very subtle. So uh, you guys aren't picking up what's going on, but the ships are now splitting off into different groups. Clergy-like people are casting spells as you guys are splitting up. It seems like the ships are splitting off in groups of two, two, and three. Ah! You call off from your crow's nest, and you've remained in that form for how long? Like half an hour, right? I have dancing lights. Hey, Ergo, would you like to cast some dancing lights to alert the ship? Sure. All right, you cast dancing lights up in the sky in hopes that Arog sees it. Arog, you're 40 feet under. You're magical. You're magical. Magical periscope can port straight up if you need it to, so roll a perception check to see if you catch this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the prisoners are be ta being taken below deck, and they say something else in Elven, which you guys don't understand. I just start protesting, and I'm just like, there seems to be some sort of misunderstanding, and I just keep repeating that. That. There's something, there must have been a misunderstanding somewhere. Um, I throw out key sentences like, I'd like to speak to your manager. Um, <laughs> Roll diplomacy. I'll cover all the 
One of the guys in Cassocks is sort of like taps on the shoulder and says, don't worry, it's all straightened out as so we take you below deck. Yeah. Meanwhile, Arog, on the ship, you do see some lights moving up above. Strange for stars to move in such a way. I mean, they went to the ship that was closest to us. Can I just follow that ship? By use of the dancing lights, you can spot which ship that Aragu is sending the signal from. Okay. So as long as you start your chase right now, you can follow that particular ship. Yeah, we're going to follow that ship. Stay, stay in our current depth, and we're just going to follow it and see what happens. I have faith in my crew, and I just, it's not time for Raymond. So a yeah. bunch of other ships split off, so now it's only uh, two ships that you're following, and three go one direction, two go another direction, so you're, you're following two ships. I have to go to the bathroom. Room. Say, feel free. Oh, no, so, <laughs> I, I glare at them, and then I walk, walk away a little bit, and I turn back around, look at them, and I sit down. <laughs> uh, they take you below deck, and you're sat down, and they start lighting some incense, and saying something in the strange elven tongue. I say that I would really like to speak to somebody's manager. <laughs> Diplomacy. 14. We're a religious-looking guy, like I said, in a heavy cassock, religious markings on his clothing. Obviously, paladin like looking person, some of what Karam would have dressed like, approaches you. Obviously, the leader, as this incense is being burnt, and says to you, Do not worry, my friend. As long as you truly seek atonement and are repentant of your misdeeds, no harm will come to you. I say out loud, I was trying to acknowledge religion role as I look at the garb that they're wearing and try to recognize as 20 not natural. 20 not natural. It is the god Ray. Very evangelical, sort of obnoxious paladins. I asked Healers, leader, followers of light, I similar asked to Karim. The leader if the whole caravan of ships uh, also follow their faith. Cult. They hail from the Lorland. They are uh, out on a quest seeking artifacts, aid in their holy causes. They have encountered the demon ship before and many, many like you and have uh, helped many like you repent and are hoping that all of you make the right choice here as this bottom deck fills with smoke. So need to know if you're willing first for atonement. They can't make you do it unwillingly. Seems like your other crew members are going along with it, but you can choose to remain evil if you want. The amount of baggage I carry with me, I say this out loud to the priest, that it's just the amount of baggage I carry with me as a being, what I've been through. Yeah. My short, I look at Phil's body and I look back at human life. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for this, you know, more about your, your, your word. Right. Before I devote my life to. They say they bring the ah. healing flame, the ever light from the dawn flower, and that they believe in the power of healing light and the power of healing flame. So they also believe in second chances. So they, they don't want to harm you. They promise to not to, to try not to kill you, but they can't allow evil in their midst. And if you refuse atonement, they, you will face the blinding light. Ah. I'm just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I was never really evil to start with. I was just <laughs> pretending. All right, bluff check. Oh, with you, hallelujah, to help save these souls. In fact, there's more souls that we could go get <laughs> to bring to the cause. I got 17 on my bluff. Certainly has a suspicious look in his eye, but you could tell being the evangelical types of people, the idea of saving even more souls is definitely tempting to this guy. <laughs> so at first, he's going to make all the rest of your former crewmates atone because they are willingly doing so, at which point in time they will return back to their original alignments, no longer evil and they'll be fully healed and they're now back to their good old normal selves and will be untied oh, magically atoned for all their evil deeds and now they're back to them good old normal selves have been untied and are free to walk around the <laughs> ship you're, you're saying you already are good I believe that I am good and I look at the priest in my heart and I tell them that I'm willing to journey but not I don't want to be this. I'm, I'm a little asthmatic. I don't want to be in that smoke. <laughs> Alright. They'll say if you agree to take the mark of judgment, they'll, they'll let you freely walk around their ship. Uh -huh. And what is the mark judging? Well, the mark is a magical mark that will be placed on you by this paladin, and it's in the form of a mark of his god, Saren Ray, so it's a burn on your arm, basically. And if you commit an evil deed, a misdeed, an evil act, it will affect you in a negative way. You'll take a minus six to an ability score. <laughs> I'm like, He doesn't want to atone for his sins. So this is the only way they'll trust him if he doesn't want to atone. Yeah. This religious leader, his name is Jeremetrius, and he's been very kind and very friendly with you, but he does seem pretty firm about you taking this mark. I'm gonna be like, or atoning. I'm gonna be like, Jeremy, can I call you Jeremy? He prefers <laughs> Jeremetrius, but he understands. It's an, it's an elven name, it might be too hard for you to pronounce, he understands. I'm like, Jeremy, if you're willing to sit with me and guide me through this process, I'll go back and do this 
Smoke room. Alright, so you do, you would like to atone for your sins? Yeah, I'm gonna atone for all of my sins. <laughs> Alright, all that takes is willingness. It's really willing. You sit through this smoke ceremony, he prays over you with his god, Saren Ray, and cleanses you with a healing light. You feel a glow come over you. You are now fully healed. You're full HP, and you are no longer evil. Your alignment returns to whatever your alignment was before you were evil. That was it. Yeah, you just sit in a smoky room and ask for forgiveness, and he gives you a prayer, and now you're not evil anymore. Pretty simple process. I'm like, well, alright, now, what? now you're free to walk around the ship as you like until they get back to port. We're taking you back to Lorland and you can go about your life as you wish. You're a free soul, no longer right. trapped by the demon ship. You're free to I do as you wish and pursue your dreams. I asked your Amethius in there if he would like to help me save some more souls. As a follower of Saren, right? That's their mission is to save more souls. I tell Jerem to tell me everything he knows. I'm very into embracing their religion full with my heart wide open. And I say that out loud with my heart wide open. All right, diplomacy to ask more about Saren Ray. Oh, too. Well, he would love to tell you more at some other time. When we get back to docks, maybe if you want to sit down and have a talk about Saren Ray, he would love to. Until then, just busy yourself out of the ship and try to stay out of the way. Does he want, want me to want to save more souls? Yeah, of course. He loves redeeming evildoers. I tell him that there's a whole demon ship. The demon ship is with us. And I... Damn, the capo. It says, well, if it comes near, you know, we're prepared. And if we can save more souls, we will. Well, we've learned it's best to flee the demon ship, which is what we are doing currently. We get closer to shore, we won't be able to follow us without surfacing, and then we'll be able to spot it very easily. I asked them if they have uh, any robots available on their ship. <laughs> They'll say, of course we have vessels if something happens, emergency vessels. Awesome. Why I do thought... you ask? Oh, what? <laughs> why, why do you ask? Oh, in case I need to... Well, go save people that I care about from evil doings of their lives. Oh, you really did atone. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to the Jack Bar. <laughs> there's a small gal on the ship. There's some like fruit, granola bars. If you want a snack, they you know they seem very friendly here. They're, they offer you whatever you need. Awesome. I eat the fruit like a starving person because I am, and or at least still is. And then I ask Bill out, ask him if they got any hot dogs. I rolled high enough that they do. <laughs> it's a fish dog, and there's no buns. Like, give me Two <laughs> right, they, they sling you two fish dogs, no buns. I, um, and then I pocket granola bars. Alright, you can steal up to 1d6 rations if you like, roll a d6 and snag that many. Five! Alright, you grab five, five granola oh. bars. Chef in the galley sees you taking them and says, Oh, I hope you like them, they're my own personal recipe. I'm like, oh my god, you made those? He's like, yeah, once a week. I'm like, that's such a beautiful quality. And then I tell him to have a blessed day. Yeah, you too. I go to the boat, the boat, little boat. Alright, you go up to the top deck and see where where the ape ships are hanging on the side. Yeah, I whistle for uh, being known as Ergu. Let's check Ergu to see if you see Bekefo come out and whistle at you. <laughs> A bunch, a bunch of the crew members are looking at you as you make noises, you know, so you've got the attention of a lot of crew members right now. 21. Yeah, you hear that too. Everyone does. Everyone's looking that direction. Your little bird head turns that direction as well. Kevin's got everyone on top deck's attention. I'm like, ah! Why don't I land on I pick my talent. I look up at Ergu. I'm like, let's go. And I look at the people on the boat and I'm just like, Behold, this creature has come to repent. <laughs> oh. Blessed be. <laughs> He's not down there anymore, and it's not smoked out anymore. It's just below deck now. It seems to be like storage stuff down there, a little room to sleep and sit. There's a couple other crew members down there. And Jeremetrius, uh, now apparently re retired to some quarters behind closed doors. Okay, well, if no one's dazzled by my religious performance on the deck, then me and the bird with the Italians might head to get in. The escape boat. Alright, so you start trying to untie this boat on the side of the ship. A bunch of the crewmen are gonna stop up and come up and tell you to stop doing that. I'm like, no, 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 it's totally cool. Germs that I could take this. I'm going out into the waters because my faith is telling me if I go out, I will bring back more that need to be saved. Ah! Right, they're gonna reach their scimitars and pull them out and say, do you just go back below deck? And I'm gonna be like, no, I'm dead serious. Jeremetheus told me I have permission to do this. Bluff and diplomacy, I guess. Well, they're, they're, uh, they're gonna signal to get Jeremetheus. He's gonna um, see what all the rigmarole is. Jeremetrius will say those boats are for emergencies only. I walk up to Jeremetrius and I'm like quietly beside him. I'm like, what term? I thought you just said that it was cool if I take a boat out to go save more people. We prefer not to encounter the demon ship if we can help it. We flee is the best way. I'm like, look, I promise. I'll bring your boat back. I'll also bring your 
bring one more soul to be saved. And I'm like, look, look. Look, you seem like you're really on fire in Evangelica. Tell you what, we'll get back to Doc. We'll talk about Saren Ray. And if you're really on fire for the Lord, we'll get you on a crew. And you can come back out here looking for your friends. I spread my wings on top of Bill's head. And I'm just like, ah! See, your bird likes this idea. Well, give us just a couple of weeks. You come back to town. We'll talk about converting you fully. We'll get you right back out here looking for your friends. Well, I send everyone to, and I say that I'm going to go get sleep. There's not a whole lot of room to sleep, so you guys are kind of in a cramped space below deck, you and these other new members of this crew that have just joined, so you guys are kind of in a pile together, resting at night. Why are flying back on crow's nest? You may, but after about half an hour, you're going to turn back into air goo. Yeah, I'm going to hide up in the crow's nest. All right, you hide up there and worm form and hope no one climbs up there for any reason. Yeah. Usually, they don't need to unless they're trying to spot other ships or spot land. I tuck myself away. All right, you try to hide up in that bucket as this galleon-sized ship, and one similar-sized ship, sails north-ish. Meanwhile, Arog and the demon ship is following at a discreet distance from underwater. You can see, like, the base of their ship, so you're following at a safe distance. Yes, but I am starting to get very suspicious because at a set time. Yeah. And all I've got is a little hard one. More than half an hour now, so yeah, you've been yeah. following uh, these guys. I'm starting to get real worried about my crew. And I have a very strong feeling that they've probably been captured. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like it might be a possibility. Can I catch up with these guys? Your, your ship uh, has the ability, you can give the command for them to speed up and try to catch up to it if you like. At this point, you're probably 40, 60 feet underwater and then diagonally about 40, 60 away. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everyone to bat down the hatches. <laughs> Here for Rams. <laughs> Alright, you're gonna go for the Ram? Alright, you guys go for a Ram. Roll me a will save as you go for a Ram. Yeah, I rolled about the same for your crew members. So all of you, as you get within a range of this ship, are affected by a sanctuary spell, which will halt the ship's forward motion and make you all unwilling to attack this ship. The ship is now warded from your evil attacks. It's also uh, got a protection from evil spell against it, so if you get any closer to it, start taking minuses. Yeah. All right, I want to drop back a little bit and surface, so they definitely know that I'm back. <laughs> all right, you drop back and surface. You get, you know, because like I said, there's only a certain closeness you can get because of this sanctuary spell. You can't get any closer, so you get about like exactly that close and surface the ship. Someone will think they spot something, so they'll, the captain will have one of them climb to the crow's nest to make sure if that's something they see out there, it's nighttime. So there's someone climbing towards the crow's nest now, Aragoo, to spot the demon ship they think they see behind them, just oh. surfaced. You can hear them climbing up, of course. I try to stealth away. You can only a stealth trick to try to, like, fly up really fast and hide somewhere or something, or slink and try to blend well, in. I'm so dexterous, I'm not natural 20. I rolled a tube, so it's gonna walk right past you. Not, you're, like, twirled around something, but you made yourself turn brown, and so it doesn't even notice, because you're, like, tied around a mast. He gets up in the crow's nest, gets out his spyglass, his uh, telescope looking dealy. He sees something in the water, but it's dark. He's not sure. It's because it's just the, the top of the demon ship. He, think, he thinks he sees something back there, but he can't confirm the captain, but he thinks there's something behind the ship. He does yell out that something's directly behind the ship. Can I see this guy in the crow's nest? I can do ghost sound at will, always. I saw him when I'm here. And I'm like... <laughs> I rolled a pretty low will save, so he's like, where's that noise coming from? He's freaked out. He's gonna yell down to the captain that something's going on, there's some weird noises up here. So all the crew's on alert, they've got their weapons ready, all their spells are cast, they're geared up and ready if anything happens. They're gonna lock the lower deck, so all the comers that are sleeping below deck in a pile are now locked down there. I mean, I'm just gonna safely follow them. Don't really have any offense with this ship, so... Stale, like a stalemate? Yeah. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna follow them. I'm coming after you. You follow through the until daybreak. So Kefo and Phil's body and the rest of the new crew members will wake up and realize that you guys are locked below deck. The portal will briefly open as they will. The guy from the galley that you met before will present you guys with a very nice breakfast, actually. Uh, fancier than anything we ever ate on the demon ship. It's like quail eggs and uh, some like fresh fish. And uh, so you have a real nice breakfast, but then they lock the door back on you, so you're kind of stuck down there. You're kind of eating in the dark. I'm just like trying to secrete things. Oh, I rolled that you have started secreting something. Did they bring a, a fork with our breakfast? They did bring a spoon with your breakfast. Can I affect what I'm secreting? With a perception check. Nine. <laughs> yeah, you're not sure. Just looking at it, it's a clear liquid. Okay, cool. I just try to like fill my area with that. All right, secrete. you try to secrete. It drips down from the bucket, and there's like a leak of drips coming down from the crow's nest. It's probably about a gallon of this liquid at this point. <laughs> Is it having a reaction? It's making them wet. <laughs> yeah. There's this thing where I ask the police three to six questions. I did pray or something for that. Commune is a spell that you have. You can do it once a week. For one round, so for six seconds, you can ask six questions. It has to be simple yes or no questions. Am I pleasing her as my goddess so far? Yes. Oh, oh, really? Yes. That's two questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That 
is a classic mistake. Am I on the right path to reaching my final form? Yes. Is Lazy Bones alive? No. Do I know Oski? No. Did I kill all these guys on this ship? Unclear. I just keep secreting. So you guys continue to travel northish. If the demon ship does nothing, you guys will continue towards New Dorp. You just follow at a safe distance. Oh, I would like to use my unlock the door. Alright, roll me a sleight of hand to try to unlock the door with your spoon. Now Alright, you're able to unlock the door with a spoon. Barely lock it all. It's like a, a like a wooden latch. Perception check of Bekefa when you open the door. 22. There's a crew member right above and he says, whoops, and pushes it back down and closes the latch again. Aww. I just stand there in front of the door for like five minutes. This time you're doing it and as soon as you do, you see he like bends over and looks through where like the, the crack where the slat is where you're sticking your spoon. And he says, hey, you cut that out down there. And I'm like, you got it out! He's like, what's the matter? You need something? We'll get you whatever you need. It's for your own safety that you stay down there. We don't want you to get hurt. We might be under attack soon. I'm like, Mama, get fired! Well, if we end up in dire straits, I'm sure the captain will let you out. You can always defend yourself. Do you need a weapon or anything? Yes. Hold on a second. I'll grab you something. Thank you. These guys are really yeah. nice. This guy is so nice. He comes back and opens uh, opens the door and hands you a spear. It says here, if anyone comes down here, you, you protect all your friends with this. It says, if you need anything else, let me know. And he closes the door back and latches it. I'm like, hey, who are you guys fighting? Ready in case the demon ship gets any closer. Or if any of the men come above deck and start attacking. We should be getting close to Loreland any day now. So once we're there, the ship should not be able to follow us too close. Uh, after a little while, I smell that light, you know, where I touch something and it glows. I'm going to do that to the door. Here it glows. And I'm going to be like, what? Crazy. Yeah. Well, perception check. 29. Well, the guard upstairs has gotten the attention of another guard and is saying, Wow, that Phil guy is really a natural. I can't wait till we get him back and make sure he's fully converted. He's going to be great on these on our ships, man. He's a natural evangelical. Let's uh -huh. go down there. It was just with a basic light spell, too. That's impressive. I hear him mocking me, but I still keep up the act. I'm going to turn into a rat and just start doing like, rat stuff running around the ship unnoticed from a rat. Yeah, no one, they get restless at all times. So unless you go into the galley and get the attention of the chef or bother anyone in particular, if you're just walking around. Yeah, roll me a stealth check unless you're trying to get noticed. I'm not. I rolled so. pretty low though, because you're not their main concern. I got a nine. I got 25, roll rat. Yeah, you're super stealthy. They don't see you. You can pretty much go wherever you want right now. I'm gonna go find Phil. Yeah, you can find Phil. Boom, you're all the way at the bottom of the, there's plenty of rat sized holes. You're down there. You're down there with, with Phil. The, the, the door's all lit up and Phil's like talking in tongues when you arrive. You very easily get down there. They're sort of in a storage area. They're down there with like a bunch of crates. They're kind of like sleeping on a floor in the bottom deck of it. Not necessarily prisoners. There's kind of like they're with containers and stuff. I'm gonna run over to Phil and jump on his head. I start like rat clawing his head so he knows me. And I didn't like my Phil takes a hint. I can speak as a rat for some reason. You can speak in Sylvan, yeah. I'm not. I'm just like. Which, which translates in Sylvan to what? So you can understand Sylvan, so you can actually speak to Bekefo. That's normal. She, she was always neutral. I'm just neutral. You're not evil. I'm not evil. Yeah, but you don't, but you don't have the ability to sense that. You can only detect uh, someone's lawfulness. You can only do that part of the spectrum. You can't actually uh, other part of the spectrum. Oh, okay. Then I, then I just regular rat eyes. <laughs> you can't tell if people are good or evil. You can only tell if they're lawful, chaotic, or neutral. I'm going to ask you if you can open this door. I try to do it with my rat paws. I'm going to roll one. A uh, stealth not be seen by the guard, and then a strength. Plenty not natural. I got, and a I got 25 to spot you, yeah. So you're gonna go and roll your strength, but then we can roll for initiative. Oh, he spotted me? Yep, and I got a 25 for initiative as well. Alright! Yeah, he's standing above the door, it's his job. Oh, I'm like, ah, ah, through the door, which means like distract him. But I only got a 16 I'm, versus your I'm, AC. Woo! 
So yeah, he misses you. He tries to like hit you with the scimitar, but he you know just hits the ship. Use that shit. I'll yeah. Something. I go into a rat race. I'm just gonna jump in this guy's face. All right, roll me an acrobatics to jump towards his face, then an attack. I get a nat twenty for jump. You are in face. I start like rat falling right at his level. Nineteen. So you're on his face, but you don't break any skin. This escalate quickly. He's gonna try to say B, but missed. I'm getting. Could not grab you. I'm just on his face. I'm just gonna listen through the door for right now, but my spoon is in the latch. Yeah, and you can sort of see through the crack just a little bit, so you can like see the action from below at a very weird angle. There's a slat that you're putting the spoon through that you can also like hear through and see, and you're at a very weird angle. You're like looking underneath the floor of the floor above, so you're like looking from underneath. Natural 20! That's gonna be a hit. It's gonna be a total of 26 versus your AC. It's gonna be 10 damage to you, here we go. Of course you heal to every turn, so it's not that big of a deal. Intimidation check if you want to try and scare him. I got a 24 on that intimidation. I'm scaring this guy's a rat. He's unable to grab you, and he missed you, and he swung at you. I'm kind of moist because of all the secreting. Did you do an attack on your turn or anything? Can I still tail slap this guy as a rat? Yeah, you still have a tail. Alright, I, I tail slap him, whirl around, and I'm like, Wah! Oh man, I get a, a really bad roll though. Yeah, I, I think Aragorn missed you. I rolled a three, so. Well, I'm this Tom and Jerry act is going on <laughs> in the hallway, and I don't want to use my wood shape. I'm going to try to. I'm gonna try spoon first. I'm gonna try spoon the door one more time. Slide of hand. Fifteen. Yeah, you're able to undo a latch. As I do that, I use my special ability of wild shape to turn into a common dog. I, I like open. I, I like open the door and then I turn into a dog. All right, so the door's open. You're now a dog down on the ground. Door's yeah, up I, there above you. Uh, the door's a, a hole in the floor, which is the ceiling for you. And now that you're a dog, you can't reach it on all fours and on the ground. Ah, 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 like, all right. you know, all right, so the door's open. You're down there barking. That's got to be a big distraction. You know, ah. rat fight. Do you do anything? Raging. Tell it. Oh, man. Keep missing with your tail. Yeah, you tell I us, get points. You tell this guard's getting frustrated. Tries to grab you again. That's a 20 versus your CMD. Oh, I'm, I'm, that matches it. I'm good. Right. Matches you get a uh, reflex save. Sixteen. Alright, just barely. You slip out of his grasp. He like has you in his hand, but then you like squeeze out. Because yeah. although you look like a rat, you're still sort of your real self on the inside. So your body gets kind of squishy and you squeeze out of his hand. Jelly Don't forget about all them secretions. Ah, 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 ah. I'm still just making a scene. There's a dog barking underneath ah, you. Ah, fucked up! I'm stuck! Ah, ah, ah. Is anyone coming? Like, are we creating a the commotion? There's other guys down here, but they don't seem, I mean, they're just watching this guy fight this rat by himself. They don't seem like he needs, they don't seem to think he needs help. You can handle it, Banto. I'm gonna rat screech and I'm gonna kick this guy's ass. Let's do this. Oh, man. They start cheering Banto Sex. Banto Sex, which is apparently this guy's name. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. barks along with the chant. You miss hitting him again. He doesn't try and grab you again. This time he only got a 15, so he fails to grab you. So you're like all over his upper body. I'm just like whirling around. Yeah. Band toe sex. Band toe sex. <laughs> Am I just gonna keep rolling to try and hit this guy? Nope. I'm gonna cast spider climb on myself. Alright, you oh, cast spider climb on yourself. The dog starts walking up the walls. You walk upside down the ceiling and you crawl your way up to the next level. You're now up there with Pekefa who's having a rat fight with this guy. A Jeremetrius pops his head down from the deck above to see what all the yelling is now that everyone's cheering for Banto Sax. I sit like this when I wag my tail on the floor. I'm like, <laughs> He casts Dispel Chaos on the area, which gives uh, everyone a plus four against chaotic creatures. That's me! And then Banto rolls a natural 20, which is gonna be uh, a 30 with a plus four to grab you. Oh! So you're grabbed. Yeah! He's got you in both, he's got you in both hands now. I run up to Banto and start looking at him. Without hoping, like, <laughs> He shakes his leg trying to get you off. I hope harder. Not now, dog. <laughs> Whose dog is this? Where'd this dog come from? I'm gonna see where it's out of that bit. Yeah, let's do it. 22. Gotta be a 30 right now, because that's what I rolled to grab you, so unfortunately, yeah. no. That's what he's got to hold you. He's gonna yell for the men to bring him a bucket or something. I bite him! Roll an attack to try to bite him while he's holding uh, you. 21. Barely you get to bite him in his hand, so roll some damage on his hand. 3 damage. Alright, you do 3 damage to his hand, and he's gonna try and toss you into a bucket, and he's gonna try to toss a piece of cloth over it. I like panting. <laughs> I'm like following the bucket. Right, you look in the bucket, someone comes over and heals up his hand. Magically, the wound seals back up where you bit him. You're now trapped and it's just completely dark around you now. You're in a bucket with a piece of cloth over it. I bite the cloth. Do you want to climb, try to climb up the side of the bucket and bite by the cloth? Roll yeah. me a climb check to try to scrape your way up the side of the bucket. Well, it's a wooden bucket, so it's not that difficult. You are able to climb up to the cloth and nibble oh, at it if you like. Uh, I bite it? 
You're able to start nibbling at it. You just roll your damage for bite. Three. The crew starts yelling, he's biting through the cloth. Get a cage for it or something. So they're all like scrambling around to try to find a crate or a box or some other form I'll of cage. Come, I'll come stealth away once I bite through this cloth, please. Hey, you're not all the way through it yet. You can only okay. bite to keep biting if you like. Is the bucket on the ground? The bucket is on the ground, yep. I would like to pick up the bucket. Oh, knock it over. I gotta chew on that cloth. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just knock it over real instantly. All right, dog walks over, knocks it over innocently. Roll a bluff check to pretend to be innocent when you knock it over. <laughs> like, ah, like, with my paws, I'm Stupid just, dog. Like, like, all game. It's a I'm three. To help. It's a three. All right, you don't look that. You look guilty. You try, try to look innocent, but you do the thing with the dog eyes, where the dog looks like, uh oh. Dog knows he did something bad. No, I knew it got that garbage out of the trash can when it shouldn't have. So you look really guilty, and they know you did it on purpose. The bucket's fallen over, but you're not out of the bucket yet. You can walk out of the bucket now, though. Yeah, I get up out of that bucket. I cast urine mist and get away. Right, you so cast obscuring I, mist as you yeah. do. You're gonna get swung on by one of the guys, but he's gonna miss. Or the scimitar just swings and ship lore right beside you, narrowly missing your tail. Tom and Jerry kid trying to like peace out. Yeah, I'm just gonna stealth away as a rat the, the walls uh, and just like run hide. Or stealth. stealth and just try to hide. Get away somewhere they can't find. No! Well, I did a really bad stealth, and I want to use one of my anti hero points to. Yeah, what, what will happen is I'll take a minus eight to my perception. Oh, I rolled a seven. Yay! Do not see you. You're able to slink away because of the fog and because of your anti hero point. You're now hidden somewhere as a rat. You probably got like 25 more minutes to kill or so in rat form. Sick. So I'm just like traveling through the walls. I'm just going to like spy on everyone. <laughs> I'm right. just gonna start sniffing around the hallway and find my way to top deck. Alright, so it's a similar kind of thing because you're a dog, unless you start spider walking again, which might freak out some people. No, no, I'm just gonna walk regular. I don't need my spider. I don't yeah. need my spider right now. If you walk regular, then you're just stuck on this deck of the ship, which is like mid deck, which seems oh. to have lots, just sit lot, like the demon ship, this seems to have a lot of bunks, a galley, I'm gonna go to the galley and beg for a treat. Oh, you can go beg for a treat. I beg for a treat. You get one. The chef seems really friendly. You obviously I a fish said. dog. Yeah, you know the fish dog. I lick the chef. His favorite. Ah! He's like, whose dog is this? I love it. It's beautiful. Cute dog. Let's give it a name. No one claims it. You make great friends in the kitchen. A bunch of the other crew members come around. They don't, no one knows where this dog came from. So they decide to try to give you a name. I look like I have to, and I like start to lift my leg and I like look at them like, oh. They get you to the top deck and try to get you to pee off the side of the ship. I pee off the side of the ship. Ah, ah, ah. I look out this, of the, on the deck and look and see if I can see the demon. Yeah, you can see it. It's right behind the ship by about 30, 40 feet right behind the ship. Holding pattern. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the Dullivan, Sin and Ivory have arrived at the base of the foothills near these larger dwarven mountains near a cave opening where they were told the Duragor work underground where you might be able to get some scab work, non-union work, doing some dangerous labor. But roll, a, roll a perception check when you arrive. Seven, Ivory notices a small group of dwarven children. They seem pretty young. Only They only have a little bit of stubble on their face. Faces. You know, five o'clock shadow, not much beard yet. So very young dwarves seem to be gathered in a circle near the bottom of these hills, playing some sort of game. They seem to be cheering and, you know, yelling pretty loud, but they have their backs to you whenever you ride up and you can't quite see what game they're playing. I yell up to them and ask them what they're playing. You may. Who the heck? Hey, kiddos, what are you playing? Loading my crossbow as I'm asking that. <laughs> I look around and I'm like, oh. Diplomacy to ask. Money not natural. They're playing pocket monsters. They seem excited you've never heard of it. It's this cool game that the dwarves play. They want to invite you and your friend over to watch it around if you like. Does it involve money? No, no, you just watch. You just If you want to bet, you're allowed. I mean, some of these peep kids, they seem pretty young to bet. They bet small amounts of gold. They don't have a lot on some of these rounds, but you don't have to bet if you don't like to. Maybe another time. And so you decide to walk away. As you do, they start another game and toss out two round stone balls into the middle of the field. They transform to animal shapes and the animals start battling each other as you guys walk away. I'm definitely playing that later. You got to find a job, I mean. If there's pocket monster tournaments, you might be able to win. No, no, please, go be adults. Alright, so you're at the base of these hills. There's a cave entrance. You can... You're a camel, son. Alright, you walk into this dark cave. So there's this big opening in the side of this cliff. Huge. Dark inside. Yeah. You guys have dark vision or torches or anything? You're just gonna walk into the dark cave? I have a little light. I have dark vision, I believe. Let me check. Yeah. If you have dark vision, Sin can see in the dark, you can't. So you, you'll have to either hold Sin's hand or besides like five feet in front of your face or light a torch if you like to light a torch. I'm gonna light a torch. Ivory lights a torch, so both of you can see once the torch is lit and you guys walk into this cave. You guys walk down through this opening. At the end of this opening, there are some Duriger guards, two of them. White face, short dwarves, sort of mean, nasty looking guys, guarding a large, what looks like a vault door at the end of this cave. Hey, what do you want? Friends. I don't know you. Don't call me friend. Hey, pal. Don't call me pal. I'm not your pal. Who are you? What do you want? Hey, 
I'm not your pal, guy. Come here for work, for hard work. Diplomacy. Five. Yeah, he didn't look like he'd be good at anything. A little short fellow like you. I do great, I do great, and uh... You'll have to note that they're not much taller than you. They're dwarves, so... I was telling you that. Yeah. I do great in the underground, Just why don't you just go back outside and play with the kids? This isn't really your scene. Excuse my short friend here. <laughs> oh, good, an elf. <laughs> <laughs> you got something to say? You come here to speak to your foreman. We're looking for work. Oh, let me speak to your manager, one of these guys. <laughs> you got papers? You're looking for work? Trying to join the union? Where's your papers? We've come to join the union. Oh, join the union. So where, where, where is your papers? Who are you? You got any identification? Yeah, you can't be a union member if we can't identify who you are. You gotta go to the union office. Have you talked to anybody yet? That's back in town. Pretty expensive. Well, how do we get work that doesn't require papers? Oh, you're scabs. Scabs. Yeah, scabs. <laughs> scabs. Scabs. They start cheering scabs and they open the vault door. Oh, scabs. 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 <laughs> Uh, thousands of Duragar down in the cave start chanting, they hear the, the <laughs> chant of scabs, and they start chanting along, so now it's echoing down the hallway, thousands of voices chanting scabs at you guys. He's like, oh, go on in, scabs! Boy, if we got a job for you! We got a purple worm problem we need someone to take a look at. I mean, if you're up for the task and all. Otherwise, you might want to go back outside and play with those kids. But we need some sort of income, don't we? Seems like a personal problem. How much does a worm job pay? Oh, a big worm, big money. Oh, it's a single worm. Single worm. One, we got one big worm problem. If you could take care of our one big worm problem, I'm, I'm sure the forum would pay you a pretty penny to clean. We've got these caves we can't even get into. If you could help us out, we'd be able to expand our exploring territory. Why can't you guys get into it? Is it, like, blocked off, or is it, like... Our hazard pay isn't very good down here. You guys are the ones that should be playing with the children. <laughs> oh, I'm not as desperate as you, that's all. I still need to sleep. No, I don't want to face this work. <laughs> I forgot about one, so I'm not really... <laughs> no, we're going to go down into a dangerous cave right now at Donna Giant Worm. Right. But maybe you'll come back later, huh? Okay, maybe later. <laughs> all right, yeah, maybe we'll see you again. They close back this big vaulted door. You walk back out the dark cave, back outside where it's bright again. Those kids are still playing Pocket Monsters over there. I'm so tired of just oh, that's crazy. Uh, let's go learn about the game. When the battle's beginning, you get back now, this battle's ending, there's two little animals have fought, and, and one is victorious, one is fainted. Both balls transform back into little stone orbs that would fit in the palm of your hand. The kids go collect their, their balls. Some money changes hands for the kids that did bet. Two guys that had a battle shake hands afterwards, take their balls back. Another battle begins. Two guys roll their balls into the field, change shape into different types of animals. They battle. It's pretty simple. Hey, hey, we're not getting balls. They point to cliff sort of past the hills the, the nearest tall cliff they tell you there's a clan of dwarves up there specialize in the making of games toys entertainment they're a clan that specialize in that kind of thing that's all they do they forge dwarven toys and they make these pocket monster balls you have to find a monster ball that is attuned to you so to climb the mountain you can only try once a day the guru lets you choose one of these hand-sized balls from the pile that he has he makes them you can take one from the pile that he has every day there's only a certain number so a certain number people can come take them every day. They have a very communal lifestyle here because of the way their union works. Pretty much everything's freely traded. So kids and adults, whoever wants to poke, can just come get one. But you're only allowed to take one a day. You have to make sure it's attuned to you or it won't work. So when you, you have to climb the mountain, you have to pick a ball. When you roll the ball, they have a, a game called 10 pin. That's how you see if the ball is attuned to you. So if you can strike all 10 pins with the ball, that means that the ball is right for you. To capture an animal with your ball, you must strike it with your ball. So you have to toss it, hit it with the ball with a dex attack. If it hits them and then you are able to kill that beast if it is still within a 30 foot radius of that ball when it dies its spirit will get transformed into the ball and then you'll be able to control it once a day with a command word you can throw the ball say a command word it'll transform into that beast and attack for you with the same stats of the creature that you killed if it is defeated it does not die it faints and just turns back into a ball you can't summon it again until 24 hours later <laughs> capture its soul for all eternity in a stone yeah, you guys can rest down here at the base of this cliff seems pretty safe these kids play here and they don't seem like they're gonna rob you or steal your belongings or anything. They seem just like harmless kids besides the light gambling that they do. You guys wanna set up a little camp and take some naps in the middle of the day? You're more than welcome to recover here. Yeah, I rest against us. Yeah, you best you sit down and lean against your humps. Yeah, yeah. Take a hump nap. Nine hours later, it'll be evening. You awake, still at the base of this hill near this dark cliff. The kids are gone now. Kind of cold out, quiet. You can see some stone homes in the distance where you came from to the east. The light's on, but not much else. I sleep through 
Just you could if you me. wanted to. You had at least nine hours, so yeah, it's kind of your call. I also slept. You want to climb those mountains? Let's head up this hill. <laughs> All right. All right, so you climb the first hill. First couple of hills are pretty easy. You guys just have to go over some hills, which just takes some time before you reach the base of this mountain. So it's like middle of the night by the time you reach the base of this tall dwarven mountain. Climb it. I'll either need climbing gear for you guys to use or a climb check if you guys have one of those two things to be able to do it. Climbing gear, you can do it without a climb check as long as you guys use your climbing gear. If you don't have climbing gear, I need climb check to see if you can handle this mountain. I put on my fancy hat and try climb check. Oh, that's a natural 20. Oh, yeah. Ivory, right up the mountain, no problem. Seven. Since having a tough time, do you leave uh, Bessie behind as well? Is Bessie able to climb it? You can roll for her, but it's going to be difficult. Sort of a steep cliff. Be slow with Bessie. I'm climbing with a camel. But Ivory's up above you, like, 30, 40 feet is waving like, Come on, Sin, let's go! Ivory's way ahead. Can I look around for something to hit you? Like, close to them, like, nice patch of grass? There's some trees around if you want to tire to a tree. Yeah, I'll do that. Roll a survival to tire to a tree. Nine. Not a great knot, but it is tied. Easily could slip out of it if she wanted to, and you know if she really wanted to, she could just bite through your rope. As long as she doesn't want to go anywhere, probably fine. You don't think anyone would try to steal Bessie, and she's kind of an asshole anyway. Unless they were really large, like those orcs they kidnapped her for, you don't think dwarves could take Bessie. There'd be a lot of dwarves to take Bessie. Alright, I'm gonna try to climb again. 14. Still a little bit behind Ivory, but you're climbing now. You're, you're able to go. Not that steep, but it's not that tall of a mountain, really. It's only about of a day's climb, day and a half climb. So it is uh, the next morning before you guys reach the top of the mountain. What you do, and there's a small stone building there, sort of in a strange shape, not exactly square, and then several other domed buildings sort of connected by stone tubular like hallways between them. But the one strange shaped building seems to be the main one as an arched entrance. Can I see anybody there? There's some dwarves about in the area. White beard. Looks like a bunch of older dwarves. Uh, I'll approach the closest one. Hello. They'll welcome you to their, their clan hovels, their home. Ask what brings you here and why you brought an elf with you. you want to become pocket master? Never heard it called that before, but they'll gesture you towards the inside of their forge where they're forging these different stone toys and such. They have a wide variety of stone games and toys and all kinds of fun things. But uh, there's a pile of freshly made ones today. They're handcrafted. All of them have intricate dwarven designs in them. Today there are eight available stone balls out on a, a shelf available for pick today. Luckily for you, there's only seven people here so far in line for them. We jump in line. So the first guy tries one. Oh, unfortunately he only knocks down seven pins. That ball's not for him, so all eight balls remain. Second one, only knocks down five pins. That ball wasn't for him. Third guy knocks down four pins. That ball's not for him. Fourth guy got ten pins. He gets to keep that ball, so now there's only, there's only seven balls left for the day now. Fifth guy only knocks down four pins, so he doesn't get a ball today. Eight pins. One more guy. Eight pins. So there's still seven remaining balls after the guys in front of you in line go, but now there's a line forming behind you, and you know you can only try once a day. But you both now get one try, if you want to grab a ball. Uh, so there are seven to choose from. Are we rolling? Can I uh, knowledge arcana while I look at the balls? You can knowledge arcana while you look at the ball. Thirteen. Alright, there's some conjuration and transmutation magic. Uh, it's definitely dwarven in nature. Different than, like, you've studied a lot of elven magic in your time. I see you know, your roots. So it's a little different than what you know, but it's definitely that kind of magic. I grab one towards the middle. Roll me a d10, see if it happens. Five. When you pull this ball down there, only five pins fall. No, that ball was not for you, unfortunately. Sin, you were next in line. Three. No, no dice. That ball was not for you, unfortunately. Better luck next time. See you, see you again tomorrow if you want to try again. And we'll see you again next time on The Other Dungeon. of Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater, sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater alive.